What's up everybody? Welcome to Queer Girl Straight Skates. I'm Rebel and today I have an exciting episode for you. I know I say that every time, but today, beginner to beginner, I'm going to teach you how to do a backside stall. Straight Skates is a YouTube channel all about roller skating. So if you love roller skating or if you're interested in roller skating and you think that you might want to become a roller skater, you should hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell because I put out new videos every week. If you want to support my channel, head on over to www.cheersofthequeers.com. That's where you can get cool stuff that I create that helps to support this channel, like cool beanies, there's socks, there's laces, there's skate charms, all sorts of fun stuff, even cute clothes, all there. So check it out. Now, I learned how to backside stall for the very first time last night. It's been months long of a process, and I've had many wonderful teachers, including Evelyn Ivy, who you definitely could subscribe to on their YouTube, because it's awesome. Um, Michelle Stylin, AKA Estrogen was helping me. And I've had many people try and teach me backsides, and it has been the longest process. But last night, I finally nailed it. And so although I am no expert, I do believe that it is really cool to have a beginner teach other beginners something. So I, as a beginner, beginner backsider, backside staller, I am going to teach you what broke through to me and my process of how I've learned how to backside stall. Okay, so we are going to learn how to backside stall now. So let's go. So the first question that we need to answer is what even is a backside stall? So I, for the longest time, was really confusing fakie stalls with backside stalls. So let me clarify the difference for you. Okay, so the difference between a backside stall and a fakie stall is that a fakie stall is when you're pumping on the transition, when you go backwards or you go fakie and then you stall on the coping behind you and you don't do any turn or anything in order to land on that coping, you just kind of go from a pump in the transition to land on the coping. And you're landing it backwards, aka fakie. So it's called a fakie stall. So a backside stall is when you are pumping in the transition and you're going towards the coping, you're facing the coping, and as you go to stall on the coping, you are going to turn a 180 degree turn and then you're gonna land so that you are facing into the transition instead of facing out away from the transition. So. You're pumping, you go up to the coping, you do a 180 turn either to the right or to the left, and then you land on the coping with two feet, like a plate stall. So that's the difference between a backside stall and a fakie stall. So I'm terrified of fakie stalls. I wish I could demonstrate them for you. I could show you the placement, but I am still working on that. But backside stalls have been one of those things that I've really wanted to do for a long time because I feel like they make it so that you can continue your line for longer. And I think that they look really, really cool. <laughs> so I've been trying to learn them and here are the steps of how I learned them. The first step for learning how to backside stall is that you need to be comfortable with stalling already on the coping. I would recommend being comfortable doing a two foot plate stall. I also would recommend being comfortable doing 180 turns, whether that's a jump in the transition or on flat ground, you should be comfortable doing both of those things. So the first step in learning how to do a backside stall is being able to air out once you've dropped in or you're coming up to the coping. And that looks like this. I'm out. So usually there would be a little bit more space here that you would be able to like air out instead of running into this wall. And also you're trying to get over the coping, not necessarily landing on the coping, but landing on the coping is usually the first step to being able to fully jump out and jump over the coping. So practice that first. Um, it's really difficult. <laughs> I struggled with it for a very, very, very long time. I still struggle with it. Just because you can't like perfectly get this step doesn't mean you can't move on to the next step, but I would definitely try practicing this quite a few times in order to get into your momentum and feeling your body and what it feels like to get out and over that coping. 
One way that I pump out and jump over the coping or air out of the ramp is I really focus on all of the pumps that you're doing within the ramp. So when you're pumping in a ramp, you're pumping three times. You're pumping when you first go down into the transition, you're pumping in the middle of the ramp, and then you're pumping at this last area right here, right as you're coming up out of the transition. This last pump right here is really what's gonna throw you out and catapult you over that coping. So it's a mixture of that pumping and then also picking up your knees. So lifting up your legs. A lot of times you'll have one leg that like doesn't want to cooperate and you just have to mind over matter it, which is definitely what I have to do. So practice that, learn how to air out of the coping. That is step one. So now that we know how to air out of the coping, let's talk about some foot positions. Earlier, we talked about the difference between fakie stall and a backside stall. And I'm gonna demonstrate what that looks like. I'm cheating a little bit because I'm next to a thing, but oh my God, this is so scary. This is like the worst positioning. Okay, so imagine that both of my skates are in this position right here. So both of my skates are like this. That's a position that you're going to be in in both fakie stalls or backside stall. You're going to end up in that position for both of them. It's just the approach to get into it. So with a fakie stall, you're coming up backwards and you're landing on the coping. With a backside stall, you're coming at it forwards and then you're turning around and you're landing on the coping. The next part, what we're going to do is when we are airing out, we're actually not going to try and catapult ourselves super, super far. We're actually just going to try and turn our body once we're up at the top of the coping. And what that looks like is we're still giving us that momentum, but we're just trying to like turn our body and land out sideways. And that can look to you to the right or to the left. It doesn't matter. Whichever side you feel most comfortable with. I feel more comfortable turning to the left. So I'm going to try and jump out and land like this not on the coping, outside of the coping, on the deck. Or if you are a person who likes to turn to the right, you would try and jump out and get both feet on the deck, but sideways instead of forward, which is what we did before. So let's see what that looks like. See, so I'm landing out of the coping on the deck and I'm landing sideways. So landing to the side. You could also land this direction if you're trying to turn to the right. I try to turn to the left, so I landed like this. Most important part of this is your upper body. So in order to get yourself to turn to the right or to the left, you have to crank that upper body to the right or to the left. It's the only way you're gonna be able to do it. And once you're comfortable with that, then you're going to be ready to move on to the next step. In order for you to understand what the next part is, you have to understand where your feet are gonna end up. So remember when we first turned in the last step, we turned to either be like this against the coping if you're turning to the right, or like this against the coping if you're turning to the left. But your ending spot in this step is going to be, if you're turning to the left, you're gonna have your left foot on the coping and your right foot is out like this. If you're turning to the right, you're gonna have your right foot on the coping and your left foot on the deck like this. Kind of so you're making like a little perpendicular moment with your feet. This part was really hard for me to grasp and it took a hot minute <laughs> for me to understand this. And uh, a big thing about this one is bending your knees. And again, you're just cranking your body around and you do have to look at the coping in order to know where to end up putting that foot. <laughs> so when I'm first getting on here, I wanna look at the coping to make sure I have my footing but then I'm immediately looking to the other side. So I wanna look wherever direction I'm going. So if I'm going to the right, I'm turning right, and then I'm looking to the other side. If I'm going to the left, I'm turning left, and then I'm looking at the other side. And the reason why I'm doing that is because wherever you look, that's where you're gonna go. So me looking at the other side, I know I'm gonna look almost like, it's almost like I'm looking in a circle. So I'm willing my body to go in a circle. So, this is what that looks like.
So I am dropping in. I land with my foot out, my other foot on the coping, and then I'm immediately looking this. Notice my body position. My body is facing towards the other side. My body isn't facing here. So if I was turning to the right, my body isn't facing this direction. My body is facing into the transition. And that's because I'm about to drop back in and go to the other side. I want to use this backside stall to continue on my line. It's not a finishing move. It's like a continuation move. Yeah, so this is one of those things that you literally have to keep drilling until you feel secure. So at first, it's gonna be really hard and complicated to like figure out the right placement and the right amount of like push and pump to give into this landing. So when I was first doing this, I kept landing way beyond the coping. Like I was pushing myself way against the wall and it looked a lot like, it looked a lot like this. Thank you. So I would land all the way against this wall because I had too much momentum and then my foot wasn't latching onto it. So sometimes you're gonna land, you're gonna land with like your feet like this or your feet like this and then you're gonna fall or you're gonna land like this. Like you're just gonna land in weird ways at first. But the important part of this is just drilling it again and again and again until you feel comfortable, until you know the right amount that you should push or the right amount to pull back. Yes, I do. Queer girl straight skates. Huh? Queer girl straight skates. I know, it's complicated. <laughs> We're consistent in landing this now. Yay, we did it. Nice job. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start, once we're on that position where we've like locked on, when we're going in, we're gonna start putting our other foot up onto the coping and we're gonna get used to dropping in from this position. Okay, so the reason why we're doing that is because when we land on the backside stall, we wanna feel confident that we can go back into the transition and feel okay. So we're practicing that until we feel comfortable. Then it's time for the big guns. And I know you're gonna be like, how does this step just jump automatically into the next step? Yesterday I found myself in this, this moment right so i had figured out how to do it with my foot my one foot on the coping and then i was putting my second foot in and dropping in and i just felt so lost like what is the next step so i called evelyn ivy and i said evelyn i need your help what, how do i go from one step to the next and what she told me was that you just have to keep drilling it until you're literally just like i'm tired of doing this now and you start like tapping your foot on the coping. And I was like, that seems kind of wild, but okay, I'll try it. And what I did was I just repeated that same movement like so many times that my legs were literally like bored by it. And then I decided, okay, let me try and tap it. And I didn't quite grasp that concept. And what clicked for me is that I realized that I needed to look at the coping and jump. <laughs> and I was like, I cannot just like look at the coping and jump. But I had Shove stand right next to me with her arms out and I just went for it. And when I was doing it, I was slipping and sliding and falling all over the place. I scratched her so many times with these nails. I head butted her stomach. I slipped and like fell into the transition. I face planted onto the deck many times. Um, and then I realized that there was a, a very distinct difference in some of the things I was doing. The first thing is that if I didn't look at the coping where I needed to land, I didn't land it. So I definitely would recommend looking at the coping where you're trying to land your backside stall. The second thing is if I stood straight up, I would slip out every single time. So definitely focus on bending those knees when you're going into it. The third thing I noticed is that 
if I kept missing it, I needed to go back to the basics and keep practicing that 180 turn where I just latched one foot onto it. And if I drilled that a few times and then went to jump into it, it was much more secure. So this step is to look at the coping, grab a friend if you have one to help you, and try starting to turn around and jump and land in that backside stall. And this is what that looks like. And yeah, I'm still a beginner. And yeah, I'm not nailing every single one of these. And that's okay, let's learn together, yay! And that's how you backside stall. I hope that you learned how to do it. Let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions for how to backside stall, or if you're learning and you something clicked for you, like put it down in the comments. I'm super excited. I'm proud of me, I'm proud of us. I think this is so awesome. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Queer Girl Street Skates. Thank you so, so much to Evelyn and to Estro and to Shove for helping me and encouraging me and pushing me and, um, if you want to support this channel, go ahead and shop at www.cheerstothequeers.com. I make cool accessories and jewelry and all sorts of fun stuff. And if you want to get some skates, use code REBEL on moxieskates.com. And most importantly, cheers to the queers! I'll be sitting here in my desolate room. No lights, no music, just a girl. I killed everyone. Wait, what's the next day? Something. But I feel like better. What do I say? What do I do? What do I say? What do I do? What do I say? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What? You're gonna lose your breath and be all tired. Okay.